this material may look dull, but our modern world will be empty without it. Everything we see here is pretty much concrete. 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 Aerated concrete. Precast concrete. Concrete planks. It's going to be made of hardened concrete. So you have a concrete wall, and, it goes, and that's what I do best. You actually see it every day, yet you never paid attention to it. Concrete is so simple, yet so remarkable. And as a civil engineer, I can confidently say that it is one of the most important inventions we humans has ever made. The reason is every structure that you see is built by it. Buildings, bridges, highways, dams, malls, hotels, airports. Your house, one way or another, is built by it. Concrete is undeniably the backbone of our modern society. Look at all the magnificent structures that we can see in the world right now. The curves of the Sydney Opera House, the gigantic Hoover Dam, the intricate underground network of the Tokyo subways, the London Tube, the highest building, the Burj Khalifa, the towering skyscrapers of New York. What do you got for me today, New York? And even Alicia Keys agrees. These are just some of the iconic structures that makes up our modern world. And all of these are made possible by the reliability and versatility of concrete. Yet, hear me out here. Concrete is so simple that all the ingredients that makes it up are available almost everywhere, any part of the world. You can even say they come from dirt. I mean, they are dirt cheap. Okay. The material that makes it up are just gravel or crushed rocks, sand, water. I mean, these are available almost everywhere. And probably the most complicated material of concrete is cement. Cement is made from limestone, clay, sand, and iron ore, which can be acquired from quarry in the mountains. And these are available almost everywhere. These materials are crushed and then heated in a kiln to a temperature of around 1,400 degrees Celsius or 2,552 degrees Fahrenheit for our American friends. After all this heating, the resulting substance is called clinker, which is then ground up into a fine powder to make, yep, cement. The truth is, when you pertain cement to concrete, a million brain cells of an engineer like me dies. Cement is actually the material that binds and hold all the materials that makes up concrete. Another simplicity of concrete is that it's very easy to produce, even easier than making scrambled eggs. I mean, your five-year-old can even do it. I can do it. All you have to do is put all the ingredients together, the gravel, the sand, and cement, add water, mix it up, Wait for a few days, wait for the magic of the chemical reaction of concrete and voila, you will have a mighty concrete. Usually after 7 days, concrete can gain half of its full strength and after 28 days, it can gain its full strength. That is actually equivalent to 21 to 41 megapascal and that will be 3000 to 6000 psi. If you don't talk engineering, that means a square inch of concrete can carry a load equivalent to two cars. And right now, there have been a lot of advancement in concrete engineering. The highest compressive strength that concrete can achieve and be used is around 200 megapascal. That is about 29,000 PSI of strength for our American friends. So, to put that in perspective, a square inch of concrete can carry a load equivalent to 
10 cars. Whoa, that's a lot of power. Yet this material was invented 5,000 years ago. Whoa. The Egyptians were actually the first one to devise a similar material to concrete. They mixed mud and straw to form bricks and used gypsum and lime to make mortars. While the ancient Romans used a material that is remarkably close to modern cement, and they called it opus cementitium. And I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly. Are you not Are you not but this was widespread around 150 BC, and that is actually 2,000 years ago. Like modern concrete, Roman concrete is composed of aggregates and gypsum and limes were used as binders. And there's actually a paper published from MIT that found out that Roman concrete self-heals its own cracks. And this is actually evident from the magnificent structures that we use until today. The Pantheon in Rome is still in use. The Roman aqueducts, they still deliver water to Rome's fountain. Well, what can I say? Those are some cool engineering. Modern cement, as we know today, the invention of it is actually attributed to Joseph Asbdin from Leeds, England. He was actually a bricklayer who was born in 1778. He actually experimented with various materials such as clay and limestone, and the resulting cement material has a grayish color which resembled a type of building stone found in the Isle of Portland in Dorset in England. And in 1824, as you can see here in this paper, Aspden received a patent for his invention which marked the birth of, yes, Portland cement. And as the story goes, the rest is history. Portland cement became the most widely used binder for us to create concrete. And concrete for itself became the backbone of our modern world. And there are actually three main reasons why we use concrete more than any other construction material compared to metals or steel or wood. First, concrete possesses excellent resistance to water. In fact, we use concrete structures to store, control, and transport water compared to steel which corrode and wood which decompose when exposed to water. It also has excellent resistance to fire. I mean, it is the best of both worlds. Excellent resistance to water and now excellent resistance to fire. I mean, you cannot simply burn it. I can't! I can't do it! Second, concrete is versatile and can be formed into various shapes and sizes. Just pour concrete into your desired shape, wait for a few days, and voila, you get what you want. If you're narcissistic, I mean, you can even shape it into your own image. How cool is that? The third reason is probably the most important. I mean, we're talking about money, oh money, how oh, I love thee. It is the cheapest material compared to metal and wood, and it is the most widely available material. I mean, you can find all the ingredients all over the world. And in fact, concrete is the most widely used material second only to water. Yeah, think about that. According to the Global Cement and Concrete Association, in 2020, 14 billion cubic meter of concrete was consumed. So to put that in perspective, this is the size of an average human. And this is the size of a metric cube of concrete. That is how much concrete is used per person. That is about 2 cubic meter per human in the world per year. If you will live up to 80 years old, 160 cubic meter will be produced in your entire lifetime. As people continue to live in cities and as we continue to urbanize, the projection is that the production of concrete will continue to rise. And there are now 8 billion people in the world. Can you imagine how much equivalent concrete will be produced in their lifetime? That's too much, man! And that is actually where the problem of concrete begins. With that enormous production of concrete per year, it is a gigantic contributor of CO2 emissions. You know, the major cause of global warming and all these crazy weather changes such as typhoons, hurricanes, floods, forest fires. Concrete is responsible for about 8% of the total global CO2 emission. And the main culprit is, yeah, production of cement. 
it is actually energy intensive and production of cement alone actually contributes to 7% of the total global CO2 emission. If you compare that with the aviation industry such as, you know, those flying metal objects, airplanes, jets, and that is only about 2.5% of the total global emission. That means concrete is three times more than the aviation industry. And here's the kicker. For every amount of cement that is produced, an equal amount of CO2 emission is emitted. Now, to give you an idea, the world production of concrete is about 4.5 billion tons per year. So that means an equivalent of 4.5 billion tons of CO2 is emitted every year. To put that in perspective, that is about 978 million cars. And that is three times more than the cars in the United States. But let's not lose hope. Scientists and engineers are exploring various ways to decrease the CO2 emission of cement and concrete. Some of the options include using alternative materials such as fly ash, slag, or algae-based cements. And these alternative materials can actually reduce the CO2 emissions of concrete. Another game changer is carbon capture technology. To put it simply, CO2 emissions directly from the cement plants, exhaust gases, is captured usually by absorption towers or filters. Captured gases is then processed to separate the CO2 from the other gases, and the captured CO2 will then be processed for storage or other usage. And another exciting innovation right now is 3D concrete printing. And yes, yeah, we can already print houses and small buildings. The technology works the same principle as normal 3D printing. The difference is that instead of using plastics, it uses concrete layer by layer. It helps decrease carbon emissions by using the precise amount of concrete, so there's less waste, meaning less CO2 emissions. Plus, it allows you to build more intricate designs. The technology is still in its infancy, but this is a technology I am actually excited about. I actually attended the first 3D concrete printing seminar in Melbourne, Australia. And who knows one day, you can see in your neighborhood a house being printed. And can you imagine saying, hey, print me a house. That is awesome. As we conclude our story about concrete, it is very clear that it isn't going away anytime soon. Despite the CO2 emissions associated with it, concrete remains an indispensable material that build our modern world. Just imagine a world without the roads that you pass by, the bridges that connect us, the dams that provide us water and power, or the buildings that you live in. Concrete has proven time and again, from the time of the ancient Romans to our modern world, that it can stand the test of time. It's just a call to action to strike the right balance. We need to continue innovating solutions and finding sustainable practices for concrete to be in harmony with our natural environment and this fascinating world created by concrete. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful journey about concrete. If you're still here and enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that sub button. Or maybe it's still here. I don't know where it is. I'd really appreciate it. This is Afdan. Thank you.